Hey everyone, my name is Andrick Lanfield, and today I'm taking a look at the settings that I personally use on my Tascam DR10L. That is a little device here that is recording me. This device has changed how I do audio here for the tutorials, for weddings, for interviews, for everything. This little device is awesome. If you do not have one of these and you shoot weddings or you record yourself or anything like that, you need to get one of these. These are excellent. This is not wireless, so records right onto the SD card that it has. So then there's no wireless interference problems. Uh, it is very reliable. So we're gonna take a look at the settings. Before that, I do wanna give you an audio test so you can hear the difference between this and the Rode VideoMic Pro. So this is for recording onto the Tascam DR10L right now. And then this is recording onto the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is attached to my camera about five feet away from me right now, just to give you a little bit of reference there. This little device has replaced, of course, the Rode VideoMic Pro, unless I'm doing something on the go or running gun. I don't have the time to set this up. But other than that, this thing has replaced the uh, shotgun mic for most of the things that I do. Let's take a look at the settings now. These are the settings that I've been using ever since I bought the device. I originally used the video that Matt, who is Matt Johnson made. Um, his settings were a little bit different and I just tweaked them a little bit to meet my needs. So these are my settings that I've been using and I really like them and I'll explain why I do every single setting through the menu as we go through. The first setting here is mic gain. Now mic gain is the most important one for me because this one sets the audio level before you start recording. The reason it is because I don't use the auto level in the, I think it's the fourth setting. I don't use, uh, I think, yeah, the auto, auto level in, in the fourth setting I have always turned off and I'll explain why, but mic gain is the one I set first. And you have a little bit of a, um, I don't know if you can see there, there's a little, uh, level there that will tell you what um, how loud your audio is make sure you monitor your audio before you record when doing this mic gain once you have set that your low cut I have that turned on basically the low cut will just remove any uh, low rumbles such as uh, moving in your in your cloth or fabric when the when the um, when it's rumbling or some wind so low cut is really good I have it turned on always the next one here is limiter. I have this one turned off. The reason I have this turned off is because in other settings here, we'll have a dual record. Basically, you'll record one at zero and one either at negative six or at negative 12. And the reason I don't need the limiter is because I have a backup track. So I always have that one turned off. All right, the next setting here is auto level. Now, auto level I have turned off as I was explaining because I like the dual record. Um, if you do wanna have the auto level turned on, do keep in mind that it might fluctuate as you're recording because you're basically letting the device choose when to raise the volume and when to lower it. And I prefer just to do that myself in the computer. So I have that turned off. If you wanna have that turned on, that is fine. But once you turn this on, you won't have to worry about the mic gain because the mic gain will just um, be determined by the computer. The next one here is the FS sample. Have it at 48, 48. Basically most cameras will record at 48. But if you're recording, I think with some cell phones and record at 44, so just make sure you are recording just so that when you're syncing up your video and audio, it syncs up and you don't have any audio drift. So I have it at 48 because that's what it records in. The next one is bit length. I have it set to 24 bit because you have more quality there and just bigger file sizes, but that's okay. I mean, you have so much, these, these files are so small. So 24 bit is great. You have more quality there to work with in post. The next one is file type. I have it to mono. If you're using the stock mic that comes with the Tascam DR10L, that is fine. You can use the mono. I have it set to mono and that, that works great for me. Um, keep in mind that when you have a mono, it will give you one track. And then once you put it into Premiere or, or, or any editing software you're using and you export it, it will give you a stereo track, just basically duplicates the left and right and sends you a stereo track from your mono track, if that makes any sense. Dual record, my favorite setting. I have it usually either a negative six or negative 12. Um, negative six, if I don't think that it's gonna peak, and negative 12, if I'm a little nervous from the speaker, he might um, you know, speak too loud and then bring it down too soft, and I wanna make sure that I have those levels so they don't clip. I have it at negative 12. Usually I leave it at negative 12, but if I'm just recording myself, for example, I'll have it at negative six because I just usually talk pretty quiet, so that's not a concern for me there. The next one here is um, MP3 mode. Oh, one more thing here. The dual record does record two tracks, so it will take twice as much space, obviously, but that's okay if you have an SD card with 32 gigabytes or 64, then you have plenty, plenty of room, so you don't have to worry about that. MP3 mode basically records in an MP3 format rather than the WAV format. Um, by stock, I believe it is already set to WAV format. I would just leave it at WAV. That way you have um, more quality files, bigger file sizes, but that's okay, as we said they're such small file sizes, then that you're okay. So I would not change that. 
so that you have more quality. Um, track ink, that is track increments. This basically records and it'll stop every 15 minutes and restart the, uh, the, the recording. It is very seamless, you, you can't see where the cut is, but basically what it is, it's just um, making a new file every 15 minutes. So if your recorder stops working or it dies or the battery dies or the SD card gets filled up, at least you have 15 minute increments of whatever you're recording and you don't lose the whole file, but you just uh, lose that last 15 minutes that you recorded, if that makes sense. So I have that turned on. There's no really, well, I guess there's one um, downside to it is that you have to sync them all up in the computer, but basically I just make them all into one track, lay them all straight, and then once you have them, I just either nest them or turn them into a group, and then you're good to go inside your computer. The next one here is worn beeps. Worn beeps I have turned off. If you're monitoring your audio and you have plugged into your headphone jack here on the side, um, you might want to have that turned on. It basically just reminds you if your battery is going to die or you're going to run out of space. I have it usually turned off because either I'm recording myself or I'm recording somebody that has it on them, either in their suit coat or in the pant, and I can't uh, monitor anyways. So I have that turned off. The next one here is power save. Power save, always keep it on. Basically every 10 minutes, I believe, uh, the task cam, if you're not using it, will go to sleep. So that's great. Um, the next one is name type. Name type here, I have to date. I like it by date because then it organizes them by how I recorded them throughout the day and it just is very chronological and it just makes sense for the editing room. Word would be good if you're doing maybe um, bride, groom, and you wanted to make all the settings for, I mean, all the um, file names for the groom, groom, and the bride, bride, or if you're doing like a interview and you're doing like the interviewee and the interviewer, um, you might want to name them differently, but I usually just stick to date and that works well for me. The file name, of course, that's where you would do the groom or the bride and that would record um, with the name, file name, but I just prefer to do that in post. The next one is format SD card and when you select uh, yes, it will delete everything on the SD card, so don't do that unless you want to format your SD card, so that's cool. The next setting here is a mic bias. This one basically provides power to the microphone. So if you're using the stock mic that comes with the Tascam, then have it turned on because it does need power. But if you have a microphone that has its own power, then turn it off. I think it provides, I think it's up to, I think it's two volt power from the um, manual that I was reading. So um, the next one is battery type. Just make sure you change it to the kind of battery that you're using uh, because it will help with um, with your battery saving. I use the Amazon Basics here, um, and under the Amazon Basics, you'll see right there, it tells you what kind of battery you're using. Just make sure you match it so that it helps with the battery consumption. Okay, the next one here is date and time. Make sure you set your date and time accordingly, just so that you know when it was recorded. Uh, if you don't, then it would uh, mess you up pretty good in the editing room. The next one here is system initiate. This one basically resets all the settings we just set up and um, unless you wanna do that, don't do that. So yeah, that's what that one is. Okay, version info. This is the last one here. I have a 2.01. Uh, basically tells you what version you're running. If you want to update it, I believe on their website you can download it. I downloaded it when I bought it. I can't remember how to do that, but I'm sure you can Google it. All right, so those are my settings. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching the video. I hope that was a help to you. If it was, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can watch other things like this in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.